Hello and welcome to Knowledge 9, Lesson 4. This story is the Frog Prince. Yes, indeed. And I just want you to think of the characters, the setting, the plot of the three stories that we've heard already. Think of one word that describes how they're all similar. Well, they all have magical characters, they have magical events, they have problems and solutions once upon a time. Uh, the settings are similar, and they usually end with happily ever after. Think of a word that describes how they're different. Hmm. <coughs> well, Rumpelstiltskin and the witch have uh, something in common, right? They bargain to take away someone's first child. And um, often you'll have magical characters with special powers. And that's what you're going to have here in the Frog Prince. Okay, so as with all of these stories, you may have heard the story before. But every time you hear it um, from someone else, the story is slightly different. So listen for those differences from the story that you may know. Okay, now, what, what do you see here? Yeah, that's, that's a green frog. It's in, and remember, the frogs are not the same thing as toads. Um, frogs are, they're amphibians. And what sound does a frog make? Well, sometimes, ribbit, ribbit, sometimes, bow. Oh, sometimes they sound like guitar strings, bow. <laughs> And sometimes they go. <whistles> Those are the peepers that we hear. What do frogs eat? Insects. They are carnivores. And where do they live? Both in the water and on the land. And they're nice and slimy. Anyway, let's get to reading about uh, a princess who's uh, playing around with the golden ball. Once upon a time... A mighty king lived in a palace in the shadow of a dark, mysterious forest. He had only one child, a beautiful little girl with long flowing hair, and her favorite plaything was a bright golden ball that looked just like the sun in the sky. Day after day she would run and skip under the shadow of the huge forest trees, tossing and bouncing her ball to amuse herself. She liked to pretend that her ball was indeed the sun and that the whole wide world was hers to play with. One day, however, as she spun the ball in her little hands, it slipped from her fingers, rolled over the leafy ground and fell, splash, into a deep well. She ran quickly to the edge of the well and looked in, but her beautiful golden toy had vanished into the darkness. She began to cry loudly because she was not used to disappointment when she suddenly heard a timid, scratchy voice behind her say, What is the matter, princess? Spinning around, she realized that the speaker was the ickiest frog she'd ever seen. I've dropped my ball into the well and it's lost forever, she wailed. Wailed is another way of saying she cried loudly. <clears throat> the frog looked at her and blinked. I, I could get it for you if... Oh, froggy, I'd give you anything you want if you could get my lovely ball back. You could have my, my crown. I do not want a crown, the frog said. Or, or all, all my jewels, she offered. What would a frog do with jewels, he wondered. I do not care, the princess snapped. Just get my ball. Well, the frog said, I do not want jewels, but I do want a friend. It is a lonely life being an icky frog. If I fetch your ball from the dark chilly well for you, will you agree to be my friend forever and love me and share everything that you have with me? Of course, the princess promised. But in her heart, she thought, who cares what that old frog wants? He'll never leave this well anyway. The frog 
did not know her thoughts, however, and he dived eagerly down into the well. A few seconds later, he emerged from the water, holding the precious golden ball between his two slimy webbed hands. It was very cold down there, the frog remarked, but the princess wasn't listening. Why do you think the princess wasn't listening? she cried and seizing the ball she immediately ran back to the palace the frog croaked after her wait wait i cannot run as fast as you she ignored him however and considered the matter settled do you think the matter is settled that night however while the court feasted a loud knock sounded on the door. Who do you think is at the door? The princess loved visitors, so she ran to open the door. But who should stand on the palace stairs but the icky, warty frog? She slammed the door in his face and ran back to her delicious dinner on her golden plate. Behind the heavy wood door, though, she could hear him croaking, Oh, careful, careful, Princess Fair. Promises are more than air. Hmm. Who was at the door, my darling? asked the king. Nobody, just an old frog, she said. And she told him how the frog had retrieved her ball from the well. Or how the frog had gotten her ball from the well. On the condition that she would be its friend and share everything she had with it forever afterward. She thought her father would be pleased with how she had escaped the frog's demands. But, to her surprise, he frowned. Daughter, we must keep the promises we make. What kind of kingdom would we have if we all treated each other the way you have treated this poor frog? The frog kept his promise to you, and he helped you. Now you must keep your promise to him. Go and let him in. The princess was shocked and wanted to refuse, but she could see from her father's stern look that she had to obey. Unwillingly, she got up and opened the door. The frog was still sitting patiently on the steps of the palace. When he saw the princess, he smiled happily. A smiling frog is quite a sight to behold, and bounced up and down with froggy glee. <laughs> so he bounced up and down with joy or happiness. Now, what do you think is going to happen? All right, well... There's a little magic going on here, right? Frogs don't uh, suddenly show up at a, at a, at a king's door. And uh, they don't often talk. And uh, they don't follow instructions and do favors. All right, you're going to hear the rest of this fairy tale tomorrow. Now, in the read aloud, you heard... The princess told her father how the frog had retrieved her ball from the well on the condition that she would be its friend and share everything she had with it forever afterward. Say that word, retrieved. Yeah, if you retrieved something, you got it back. Like, I retrieved my shoe from my dog. Have you ever retrieved an object that you had dropped or lost? Yeah, like, I retrieved my book from under the couch or the dog retrieved a bone that I threw to it, or I have a golden retriever who retrieves things that I throw in the yard. I don't have a golden retriever, but it's a good sentence. Anyway, um, well, tomorrow you're going to hear the second part of The Frog Prince. It's, uh, is it going to have a happily ever after? Hmm, who is going to help the poor princess who has to be friends with a frog? Oh boy, tomorrow.